Starting out the new year with a winning week, that is the way to go. We are going to help you get there, right? I'm Lauren Shahadi alongside fantasy basketball writer Sergio Gonzalez. Sometimes basketball and fantasy basketball go beyond the court to real life, and that is the case with Gilbert Arena. Some serious implications. What do fantasy owners do? Yeah, Lauren, this is a very serious situation. This has actually gotten pretty crazy since our own Ken Berger broke the news on Christmas Eve that Arenas was under investigation for possessing firearms in the locker room. Turns out the New York Post thinks that uh, Javars Crittenton and Arenas got into an argument where guns were drawn, and obviously that goes with uh, some serious consequences. We've seen in the past with players like uh, Plaxico Burris that this could actually lead to jail time and contracts being voided, and that's obviously not a good thing. But in the short term, Gilbert Arenas, we saw in his first game since the, the uh, incident that he could still put up great numbers. In the short term, we think he's still a great start but you're going to want to keep an eye on what this means for him long term. He admits he used bad judgment. We will see how it all works out, and fantasy owners should check it out right here on the site. But as you said pre-video, Serge, will the real Nate Robinson please stand up? Because he was back to earth yesterday against the Pacers. It's kind of going up and down. What are we going to see going forward? Yeah, this is unfortunately what, what fantasy owners have come to expect from Nate Robinson. He's been a very inconsistent player in the past. He came back from that long string of inactivity with 41 points against the Hawks on Friday night. Followed that up with just six points like you see there against the Pacers. He's a player that in the past has been able to put up great numbers over long stretches. He did average 25 points, four rebounds, and four assists over an entire month last season. So when he does get run, he's a good player. And Coach Mike D'Antoni says he's going to start him over Larry Hughes or keep him in the rotation over Larry Hughes. So he's going to get a chance to play. There's some thought that he could be being packaged for a potential trade, so fantasy owners should take advantage of it while you can. Okay, and while Robinson's kind of going like this and this, Michael Red's kind of on the up and up. Looks like a, a lead fantasy option on Saturday, Serge. So is that going to continue? Yeah, we hope so. Fantasy owners have been a little bit frustrated since return on December 12th. He's had a couple of good games. He did have 25 points against the Lakers on December 16th. Then he wasn't able to follow that up. He had 32 points against the Wizards on December 23rd, and then he wasn't able to follow that up. So until we see this on a consistent basis, leading up to this game, he'd actually just totaled 14 points over his previous three games. Until we see that over a consistent basis, we're not going to buy into the fact that he's completely back. This week will go a long way into determining if that's the case. All right, we will see. And I want to know about Andres Bajers because he's on my team yeah, and I is. kind of have vested interest. I want him to be healthy, obviously. I want him to be productive and I want it all together. Am I asking too much? You're asking for a lot, but Andres Bajers, we've seen in the past, he's a, he's a player who can average around 10 points and 10 rebounds per game. We actually see the numbers that he had last year. He was actually around 12 and 11. So he's a player who, when he's healthy and when he's going well, can be a solid number two fantasy center, actually a number one in larger leagues. But uh, the situation with uh, Anthony Randolph stepping up in his absence is going to create a little bit of a, a question mark in terms of can he get back to that production. And uh, right now his conditioning isn't at the level where he can play 25 to 30 minutes per game, which is what he needs to put up those numbers. We're going to start to see his minutes increase this week and we're going to start to see if that affects players like Anthony Randolph. So this week is going to go a long way in determining where exactly uh, the value is going to lie with, uh, with the right. interest for you. Right. It's good to know I'm like taking notes over here. Hmm, exactly. I've got the fantasy expert. Okay. Luther had, uh, you mentioned question mark. Question mark with him too. Is he the real deal? Long term, short term. His last six games, if you take a look at those numbers, are pretty solid. Yeah. In the last six games, he's actually been putting up great numbers. You see there the numbers. He's actually been putting up numbers worthy of probably a number two guard in a lot of leagues. Uh, in the short term, he's a player who we see putting up numbers like this because of the way T.J. Ford has been uh, moved out of the rotation. And uh, in the long term, however, we're going to see Danny Granger get back within the next couple weeks, and that could push Mike Dunleavy back to the shooting guard spot in uh, Indiana, and that could force T uh, Luther Head probably to get back to inconsistent results. So in the short term, he's a great option. In the long term, I'm not so sure. Well, we'll see, and we we'll update we you accordingly as of the time course. goes by. So you have to keep it right here on CBSSports.com. Good luck this week. Start out the new year in style. We will hopefully do the same. And for Sergio Gonzalez, I'm Lauren Shahadi. We'll talk to you real soon.